Hey everybody, welcome to the third Solus podcast. To briefly introduce ourselves, my name is Finbar, my RuneScape name is Mini Finbar, and I'm the leader of Solus. I also like Slayer. Hey guys, my name is Jeet, and I'm a Solus co leader. Hey guys, I'm Oi, rank 41 overall, and also a Solus co leader. What's up, guys? I'm Sorry Benita, aka Bonito Brown, and I'm rank 1 fishing trawler. I'm Immortals, and I'm retarded. My name is Arch, and also my in-game name is Laser Skiller, and I love the Grand Exchange. So, what has everyone been up to recently? So I just finished uh, fishing, and I got the Arty Elite Diaries done, and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm still cooking. It's week three. Still going strong. I was doing some agility. Got past twenty more agility. Did some wood cutting for a few days, and now I'm at the load doing some mining. We're still working on maps, and at the moment, I'm mining. I am um, currently doing nothing <laughs> other than waiting for the new GTA 5 coming out. Nice. I've been doing Slayer, rank 4 Slayer now, so that's going pretty well. Nice, nice. Congrats. Nice. Alright, let's get started with the questions we've been asked this week. These questions come from the clan thread and the YouTube comments. First off, what do you guys think of the new EHP rates on CML? I like how fletching was fixed, so it wasn't like so crazy on um, like the EHP days for all, like the people who were doing it. And that's, I'm glad that uh, Foot fixed it. Well, it's been a, it it took a long time, but he finally got some free time, I guess, and fixed it. That was pretty cool. Um, overall, I really like it. I think they're more balanced and actually like one to one for the most part. Um, I don't like smithing after ninety nine. I think it sh still should be Addy plates. And one other thing I don't like is how um, imbuing is calculated into some of the skills for EHP, like mining, which uh, I don't really think it should be. I don't like how some of the skills you're expected to use an alt to be able to afford it. And then other skills, it's not really included, like e.g. smithing after 99 is 200k. Um, I think if it's going to be based on alts, all the rates should be based on alts, not just some of them. Um, I've got nothing to say, I just don't use the page no more. I don't like it. And I don't really care too much. The smithing made me go back in EHP, so since they added uh, 200k an hour, which I think is ridiculous, but it's failed proof, so... Like, without uh, failing at all, doing smithing, so I guess it's okay. I like it on the whole. I mean, fletching should be zero EHP because you can join it losslessly. The thing I don't like is the way they've set up Slayer. They say 39k an hour is EHP, but if you slay efficiently using blowpipe for certain tasks, you won't be able to get EHP because of the way it calculates range versus melee XP. I mean, I yeah, recently I like did a free mill Slayer week and it's only 67 EHP because I was using Blowpipe for Hellhounds and Fire Giants. That's really dumb. If they're gonna say... If they're gonna expect you to use an alt, they may as well expect people to use Guffins as well and just make melee zero time. That yeah, way Slayer definitely. EHP would be more accurate. But anyways, the next question is... What were your opinions on being able to sell soft clay packs at the Motherload Mine to other people for nuggets? So this is referring to the fact that player A could buy soft clay packs with nuggets, he could trade them to player B for GP, player B could then sell those soft clay packs back to the reward shop for nuggets, and then they could purchase Prospector. So you could essentially buy Prospector with RSGP. It's so dumb because I spent like, I think it was seven or eight hours getting the full Prospector outfit and then doing that just like eliminates the whole grinding, well, AFKing, but still. I just didn't like how they did that and I'm glad they fixed it, but people abused it and it's really stupid. Um, I made quite a lot of money off it. I think I made 35 mil, either or 25 mil, one of the two, but... I only did it because previously they said that it wasn't a bug, and then they changed their mind and said it was a bug afterwards. So I did it because it wasn't a bug at first. Um, I don't like how they changed their mind, but I thought it should have been patched anyway, so I'm glad it got patched. 
Mm, I didn't really mind too much. I think uh, didn't really bother me. I just didn't like the way they handled it. How they like changed their mind, as always said. And yeah, just basically went back on their word and patched it after they said it was okay. Um, I didn't really mind it, but. To be honest, if that was the case, they should have done the same thing with like Max Grace, so people can buy um, Graceful. I mean, I wasn't a big fan at first, uh, and even when I like find out that it would save so much time, uh, that part I didn't really like. But the part where you can make more money from the mother load was really nice. But all in all, I think it would affect the like achievement of getting a prospector, and it would also devalue the whole diary task. My problem with it was that in the Motherload Mine development blog, they stated that prospector would take you a while to get because it would be untradeable. But by allowing this update, you could buy prospector. I'm glad they fixed it, but I find it weird that at first they said it wasn't a bug. They were met with some criticism, and then they fixed it. So basically, yeah, Jagex yeah. said it was a bug after a while. Yeah, I made 145k each per each soft clay pack, so it Blank. was a lot of money. Someone banned away already. Another thing yeah. though is, if most people train to 99 mining at the month load anyways, so buying a prospector set isn't going to save them a lot of time, because they're, only, they're going to be getting that 2.5 XP boost, but they would be getting a prospector set anyways, so... I don't think it was yeah. game breaking or anything. That only saved you a few hundred KXP. It's probably not even almost worth to buy it, and even if it is tradable. I'll probably keep all mine anyway, just in case like future updates. Yeah, that's what I was going to do previously, but. Well, look at the Motherload Mine expansion as an example of a future update. A current update it's now nothing. that requires nuggets I've and is very for... useful. Yeah, with uh, me and Benny, it's been here for like three days and been crashed once. Yeah, that's probably why they made a and it's mining a limit. Because yeah. they thought that they were going to keep the soft play pack tradable and they wanted people to still do the mother low mine, so they kept it at 72 mining. That's mainly what their reason was, to be honest. But then they changed their mind because they got too much hate, so they, like as a company, they have to police all the people, even well, if it's a majority of it. They could have even made soft clay packs untradable, or they could have made Amelie's pack's tradable, so you'd be able to buy Graceful yes. as well. Yeah, you'd make, I agree. You'd make yeah. bank off a Joby if that was the case. There wouldn't be too much more, considering, like, but well, it, depending on how much you sell a pack. Graceful is more for. useful than Prospector, I'd say, oh, yeah, in general, true, yeah. so I feel like people would pay more for that. Than... People yeah. are also more likely to lose Graceful by accident, I'd say, by using yeah. it for clues or <laughs> runecrafting and somehow losing like it. Like Immortals. <laughs> Lost on a quest, mate. Correct. Okay, so what are your thoughts on the old school RuneScape exclusive updates we've had since old school came out? These include updates like Nightmare Zone, Motherload Mine, Rooftop Agility, Zulwa, and the Wilderness Expansion. Well, um, Nightmare Zone. Well, we weren't. We were promised like something to like to train, and then it wouldn't. And then we were just left with six hour methods and it was just really dumb how that's still here and they think that it's in the game too long and they can't fix it which is just completely stupid uh zora is really fun and i've tried it um the drops are op is john c i don't know what he's doing but um besides that zora is really fun rooftop agility is awesome it's really afk i like it but it kind of ruined agility in a sense because it's not really hard to train anymore well, it never really was, but like, it's less than it used to be. Yeah. Um, done right, I think they can be really good. Like, the agility course, I really like it. MLM was pretty c cool, but um, also has room for big disaster since they, it's, like, exclusive, so it was never tested in RS3, so they can't take it off that. Um, Wilderness expansion, I think it was kind of cool. I never really used it, but it's kind of cool how more people are in the wilderness now. Zalra, I think it's too OP, and Nightmare Zone, is, don't really have anything to say about that, it's just OP. I think often they have good ideas, I just think their execution is poor in some cases. Like Nightmare Zone, there's a lot of oversights. I think it was a, like, a good base idea, and if they did it right, it would have been a good update. 
Um, Zora, I think, should have like requirements. I think there's not many miracle requirements, so everyone can do it. Um, I think the GP is probably too much an hour as well, but if it had higher requirements, I think it'd be okay. And I reckon the wilderness one's pretty okay, right? Doesn't really bring much activity to the wilderness, doesn't really serve a purpose, but it's not negative to the game. And That's yeah, mother load's good, so. Um, I like um, rooftops. I hated agility before, um, stuff like that, so. And Nightmare Zone. Um, gets too much hate. I like it because it made me get my ult. Yeah, I mean, when it started, the first thing that was big in old school, it was Nightmare Zone, and I was like, okay, this seems like a good idea. It's a, you enter a dream, like, with bosses that you have already slaughtering quests, and I know how many people don't like quests, so I was like, okay, this is gonna be good. And then, we got more information about, oh, maximum five monsters you need to have on quest. I was like, okay, fine, it's like a Dominion Tower, like in RS3. But then, like, when they first added it in, it felt like they haven't tested it, and so magic was free XP, you could pick up how many runes you ever wanted, and I was like, why didn't they fix that already? Like, like they just rushed it. It felt like rushed, and... Then eventually Guffins came in and Melee Nightmares on Hosting and you see a lot of bots being banned for Nightmares on Host. So all in all, for the game mechanics, it devalued combat in general. But then again, we already had uh, methods like bandits and stuff, and goals and stuff. They didn't really was wow, <laughs> this was something new. I have one. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, and then Muddle of Mine. Uh, it was nice up there. I loved it. Uh, made mining so much more fun, more reliable than actually have to like do granite. It was something new we haven't seen before because there was not many rocks that you could mine, and mining only one rock at a time was like ugh, it was dead uh, wage, and I, I didn't really like it. And Sora, nothing I can say more than it ruined the prices of a lot of items at start and then they fixed it by removing some items but it still wasn't enough it the damage was already done i just don't like it at all how it was like drop table could have been better it could have been made less profitable like it was another vivern but two times better yeah that's one of the things i find interesting about old school i like many of the old school specific updates but there is a trend for, if we get a new piece of content in old school, it tends to be better than any other piece of content that currently exists. So, for example, agility courses. Rooftop agility is better in every way at high level than doing the other courses that currently exist. Well, existed prior to that. So when rooftop agility came out, sure, it was fun, but no one went to do the old courses anymore, like Apatol and Dorkish Khan. The same is true for Motherload Mine, even. Motherload is slower than Granite, but it's profitable and it's a lot easier. Zolwa is a solo boss that is better than any other boss, so it kind of devalues other PVM. I like the updates, but and especially Nightmare Zone, because it's better than any other form of combat by far, because you can AFK it easily. So I like old school updates, but I feel like when they add something to old school, they end up making it the best way to train something, and so we end up with creating dead content as a result of some of the old school exclusive updates we've had. Yeah, yeah for like yeah. Zolra, they had to make it better than Wyverns, or it would just be pointless. And for agility, I think they could just fix it if they added Marks of Grace to other courses outside yeah, of the top. Yeah, but people for that. As well. Yeah, restore, like, it'd easily be combated. But people voted no for that, so... Yeah, true. Um, yeah. The question is why they would now exist to other courses that failed poll. So, yep. I don't know why you'd vote now. Casuals. It's one of the problems. We get an update into old school, which it may start out really well, but eventually people figure out that it's better than other updates. And so, yeah. it's difficult to change an update once it's in the game, as we've seen with Nightmare Zone and basically everything else. Once it's in the game, it's quite hard to change. Yeah, it's kind of hard to yeah. make an update. Oh, sorry, cool. Marcus. 
No, I was just saying about the wilderness was probably the only update so far that has been big that was not a game changing because people don't yeah. camp those forever. Yeah, and like, I was just gonna say that uh you know how Finn was talking about how updates kind of like make other things dead content, but it's kinda of hard to make an update not better than the prior one and people are gonna do it still. So yeah. it has to be somewhat better than the one before. But if it's too much better, then I see what you're saying, Finn. And that's what's happened with rooftop it's agility courses. It's really hard to balance that. And load is worse than quarry, but load is so much more relaxing and it makes mining bearable. I think I'd say mobile load was... is the most balanced one. Yeah, it's yeah. more balanced than rooftop. Yeah. I say mm. the wilderness one because people still do red chins. To be honest, that is true. I guess, yeah. Black chins were an example of a method that it's best in the red chins, but it's got a risk attached to it. So red chins are still yep. quite a good method. And mother load, yeah, so it's, pretty it's balanced. easier than granite, but granite is still good. Whereas rooftop was better than all other courses. And there's no reason to do the other courses anymore. True. Um, yeah, and also you make money. The other courses you don't make any money. Yeah. They're probably the only two courses that I know of that could be potential good is the Ape Atoll or the Wilderness one. Just due to the experience per hour. No, the Org as well. Door. The Dog. The Org could be, but there's so much input into it in resources, so people might find the it's only just course. energy ports. Yep. It's, it's also a hardcore from what I've heard. It's much more quick intensive it, so. than Ardu. What's the XP an hour? Isn't it like 64? At best, 64, 65, but you can still fail mm. at 99, so oh, you well, don't get a static amount of experience per hour. <coughs> but anyways, moving on from that, would you be for or against Jagex adding the Inferno ads to old, old school RuneScape? For those of you who don't know what the Inferno ads was, it was a special kind of hatchet which was equal on Dragon Hatchet in speed, but it would burn 30% approximately of logs that you cut. So you would get fire making experience and you didn't have to drop those logs because they were incinerated immediately. It was came from a mini game, required 92 fire making, and was basically something to help with wood cutting. Um, because it requires a higher requirement, um, I think it wouldn't be that bad, but because of the post fire making and how that's a pretty good 200 mil to get if you're going for those it's kind of overpowered and probably shouldn't come to the game i don't think it should come to the game uh like if you're going for 200 mil wood cutting it's like what 60 mil fire making you get so free xp for not training the skill so i'll always be against that mm, i'd probably be for it if it was like a dragon hatchet sink like so you had to put a dragon hatchet into it to like sink them out of the game because the minute the price of them is too low, so I guess if they could do something with that, and I'd probably be for it. Um, I really wouldn't mind it to be honest. And like um, Bond just said, um, we need to sink. To be honest, I will be for it, depending on how it turns into the game. And I'm with the uh, Immortals and uh, Bonita in this one that it needs a DX uh, sink and somehow interrupt it with, but. They also need to add in the requirements of like maybe let's say you need seventy five um, fire making to burn a magic log, but add an other like five or ten extra levels in order to use it with that tree. I, don't know. I think we already have night two fire making to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you guys. It would be good if they introduced it as a dragon axe sync. So let's say you got some item. You got a dragon hex, you went to Thurgo the Dwarf, for example, and with 92 fire making and say 75 or something, you can make the Inferno ads. And yeah, I wouldn't mind it if it was introduced in such a way that dragon axes left the game, because currently they don't leave the game, and so they're basically worthless. Yeah, I guess if there was an item sync, I'd be kind of for it. Like, Maybe I mean, it wouldn't they... bother me if it came into the game, really, but I'd still probably vote now. Maybe if they made the, uh, the woodcutting speed of it like equal to a rune axe, so. It's not like like the best wood cutting axe, but you still get fire making XP, so maybe it's a bit more balanced. I'd be for that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or if they made it so you have to recharge it with a D axe or something. And right now at DKs, the D axe is like nothing. The only good yeah. jobs are bearing and archering and like, come on. <laughs> well, and the pets, but you know, pets are 
another thing. It'd certainly be an interesting update because it would affect the metagame, as fire making would become something you'd always do after woodcutting. Yeah, yeah but, but I still don't like the night to fire making requirements for it, due to the fact that I want people to actually use it. Night to fire making isn't really that high. That's, that's why I said adding an extra 5 or 10 levels above the actually regular tree. Well, what is a level 6 mil for 99? So it's, you know, halfway through 99, so it's pretty good length, but I guess so. Mm -hmm. okay. But in order to make it... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you can continue. Yeah, I was just talking about since they need to put in the DX thing, I believe, that early on, it will help out much better than at 92, because not many people would go for off 99 after 92. No, it's true, most people who would have 90 plus fire making currently are probably going to get 99 anyways, but I'd still support it being added, and I prefer a high fire making requirement, so it's a yeah. relatively difficult item to go. But our next question is, what is your opinion on Zaya? Zaya is the new continent that is slated for release in approximately 2016 or 2017. It's going to feature a landmass half the size of the current RuneScape continent, and it will include many new things. So, at first, I was a big supporter because I thought it'd be really cool. But then looking at um, it's not, looking at Elf City and RS three, it, it wouldn't be the same thing. Obviously, it'd be a lot slower XP rates. And looking at how uh, the thieving bug went about and the current, the like what just went by the, the mobile load mine, um, whole soft clay thing, I feel like they'd need a lot of testers for Zaya. And if they rush it like Nightmare Zone, it'd be like the worst update ever because all the rates would be so fast and everything else, everything else in RuneScape would be dead content besides going into Zaya. And I'm pr I don't know if Zaya is going to require high requirements to get into, like Elf City and RS3. But if they need a lot of testing for Zaya, otherwise it's, it's going to break the game. Um, with how big of content it is, it could either be a huge flop or be actually good. But uh, I don't know. There isn't really enough information for me to have a, a strong opinion on either side. Um, so I don't really care at the moment. When I first voted for it, I just thought it was going to be a small continent, and then I don't think it had on the poll question, I don't think it had 50% of the landmass or whatever. So I voted for it without knowing how big it was going to be. And I think adding an extra 50% of the landmass is too big. Like, it doesn't need to be an update that big. And also, I was hyped for it at the start, but uh, the release date's like so far away that I'm just not really excited, so I don't really care. Um, it can go um, well, or it can go like a flop. I guess. Um, either way, I'm still pretty excited for it. It's just um, going to take ages for it to come out. I believe that the whole mass, as Bonita said, I thought it was just going to be a new continent, kind of like the Elf's Town and Elf City and everything, and it's just going to be a small continent. But if it's going to be a huge continent and and uh, it's gonna be a lot of uh, factors and everything. I believe that they actually need more testers for it. They can't just rush it. Otherwise, it's gonna be as the diary, the next level diary. <laughs> That's my concern as well. Uh, the idea of a whole new continent is quite exciting, but my concern is that with our small development team, it would take them a really, really long time to make it, and when they do make it, there's a high likelihood of there being all the bugs and I don't want to see significant bugs with something like that. I think they should consider a smaller project that's still big, like maybe a new island that's, say, the size of Varok and Felid or combined or something like that. Not an entire new continent that's half the size of the current RuneScape. That makes yeah. more sense, to be honest. That's what I thought I was voting for originally when I, they all pulled it, but apparently not. It's also going yeah, to be strange that... without quests. Because they said they probably won't have a lot of quests for it because quests take a very long time to make. Whereas the main RuneScape landmass yeah. has got many quests. I'd rather I mean, wait a while and then release it with quests rather than releasing it before the quest. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. if a random island just shows up without a quest in the lore, like what's going on? I also I think if like they want it, like want people to actually go there, like XP rates are going to have to increase. So. Oh, no. They will need something that makes it appealing to go to, but 
Jeep mentioned the Alpha City. I don't want Zeta to be like the Alpha City because the Alpha City is so much better for everything that people Dead just broken. stay there the whole time. I many players could never leave the Alpha City because everything they need is in the Alpha City, which I feel like it isolates part of the community away from the rest of the game. But I wouldn't mind a Max Guild. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, but that's another concern as well. Like, what, if they make it too good, people will just stay there forever, and you will yeah. never see someone in like Model of Mine or. In Varrock and stuff like that. So, I guess we'll have to see in the next couple of months as they start discussing in detail more plans and such. Some of the stuff they've said though, stuff like um, underwater fishing, underwater thieving, all that sounds good. So Yeah. And they talked about a boss be being as big as Virago, how is that even possible? A that big dragon, cool. but like, is that even is that even possible? Like, Virago is huge. I think it'll be very exciting. I just hope it's released yeah. properly. Yeah. If it's game breaking, then that really sucks. It feels like the boss is gonna be like the uh, big black dragon in RS3. She's quite huge. <laughs> well, like and you said, it's not gonna be released to 2016 or 17, so there's a lot of time to work on it and hopefully sort out bugs, but. I really think they need a bigger team to sort that out for how big it is going to be. It's a very ambitious project. Like, yeah. Players in the community to look for bugs. I don't know. But yes, we will find out more about Zaya in the coming months. Our next question is in regards to... Well, it's slightly more off topic. Have you guys ever taught a noob or a real-life friend how to start playing the game efficiently? I don't think I've taught a single person, but people would come up to me if I'm wearing like a RC cape or like something like that, and they'd say they'd ask for tips on like room crafting. What did I do? How did I do it? Or if I'm wearing a Slayer cape way back in the day, like over a year ago, how there weren't many people in Nine Slayer, they'd ask me what I did to get it, like if I can or not, or how how'd you go about it? And I told them how I did it, and it's pretty cool teaching them how to play the game like that. Um, same as Jeep, pretty much. I've never like directly helped somebody, but if somebody asks me a question on how to do something, I've I've helped them out. <sighs> mm. Every time I try, they don't really listen, so <laughs> I just stop trying to help people. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same. Um, I'm done with that because they'll just you say go runecraft or do agility and um, like some sort of method, and let's say I'm fuck that, I'm off to go cook fucking you, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm done. I mean, I haven't really taught anybody, but I mean, if they would have asked me, I would have said it. But most of the time, I don't like to interrupt people what they're doing in the game. They can do whatever they want. I don't like to change the stuff. But if they asked it and are interested in becoming it, of course, I would tell them how to do it. But if they then don't listen to me, I would just ignore them. <laughs> I've told a lot of people how to train Slayer officially, because there's just there's just quite a few things that people just don't seem to realize, but at the same time, it can be annoying trying to teach players how to play efficiently, because they often don't take the most logical advice. For example, if you tell a new player that it would be efficient for them to train Hunter first, they're probably not going to do that because they don't want to train Hunter, because they don't have the motivation required, or... They don't think it's going to be very good because it takes a little while to get to the money making <clears throat> stage. Or the end goal mindset. Yeah. Finn, yeah. Your, uh, your Slayer guide has definitely helped out a lot of players, I'd say. Yeah, it helps out nice um, on my own. Yeah, like, Finn was a teacher well. in Autumn LG stream the other day. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> No, I plan on making the Slayer Guide more detailed at some point. I just need a spare 30 hours or so to make it really comprehensive. So currently, on it's the small Slayer YouTube channel. The small go. Slayer Guide currently. 30 hours. Yeah, Damn. something that looks at every single task. I think a That's lot of Slayers shit. like Slayer, and it wouldn't be hard yeah. to teach them how to just do it so much better than they currently do it. Like, can they if they want to such? be efficient. Yeah, if they want Dude. to be efficient. It helped them a lot. Yeah, most of them just want to slay without a can. Because it's more profitable. Because more money that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't realize the uh, time cost. They don't look at it like that. They see it as, oh, I'm making 500k. 
rather than, oh, I'm spending three hours to make this 500k when I could be runecrafting instead and using a cannon or something like that. It's like people, it's like people that don't use stamina as well runecrafting. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. yeah. That's the thing about I uh, love with runescape because people have their own mindsets, what they want to do and not do. Yeah. That's why I don't like to change it. <laughs> this charm of it. Yeah, people just, I suppose some people just, they don't have the mentality and you can't change them until they want to learn and okay. train differently. Okay. Our next question is in regards to something that exists in MS3, but we don't have an old school. We're being asked, should we have discontinued items? So this wouldn't necessarily mean party hats, but some kind of item that once it was dropped or released in some way, it would never be obtainable again through any means. So there would always the amount in the game would always go down over time as players got banned, they just dropped the item, they out the item, anything like that, or they just quit playing. When party hats first came out, when they randomly dropped, I thought it was going to be exclusive and you could never see them again. Which I thought, you know, that's kind of cool. But if if people or certain people already had them, then it'd be a lot of money, a lot like party hats. And if it was like the reindeer hat. Which um, increased the barbarian fishing XP, but like with uh, getting faster XP like that. And I'm pretty sure the reindeer helm is gonna come back in the next holiday event, but it's pretty exclusive to people who who did it, and I didn't do it. But just saying, as that were to happen, if they're untradeable and are cosmetic, I'm fine with it. Yeah, same as always, exactly the same. But I think if they're doing tradable discontinued items. Now that it's the second time around, people would know to hoard them like in advance, so it'd be pretty dangerous to the economy to introduce them. But I guess if they're untradeable, it doesn't really affect it. As long as they don't have a, like any skilling bonuses like Rainbow Helm, then it's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't really mind them, to be honest. Um, it's something better to have than like Third Age, Ella, where stuff keeps coming into the game constantly, so... I mean, I don't really like discontinued items, really. I'm a big fan of it, but if there, if uh, there is a favoritism in the community, since we have had the party hats back in the days, I'm, I don't really mind them. This is another thing I would just put my eyes closed on. I liked discontinued items in RS3 because I saw them as a status symbol, something to achieve owning a piece of history. I mean, back in the day, I went for a white party hat, and I eventually bought a blue party hat because I saw it as not only an item that looked kind of cool, but it was something from way back in 2001 is when it originally came out. But seeing as they didn't release discontinued... Oh, I don't think discontinued rares would work in old school because the community would know just to hold them, like Fish Smash and yeah. such in LS3. We know better now, so discontinued rares wouldn't work. We can just buy third age and alleys and stuff like that now, anyways, to show off wealth. Whereas in OS3, people buy party hats. Anyways, if old school closed permanently, what would you do to fill your time instead of playing RuneScape? I'd continue to play basketball and probably go back to COD. Um, that's a tough one. I'd probably just go play console, maybe go out a bit more, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd, uh, actually revise for my A-levels, rather than playing RuneScape. And then, um, yeah, I'd probably just go back to playing Xbox. Yeah, I'd probably put on my MLG sweatbands and sweat <laughs> GB. I would, um, maybe try and perform my sport and play some other games and maybe create my own. Basically it. Probably focus more on university and read more books and stuff like that. It's hard to imagine though because RuneScape fills up so much time. I would find it very strange suddenly having all that time and not playing RuneScape to fill out. Why don't you just go to RS3 though? Well, yeah, if, I suppose if old school specifically just closed, I would just go to RS3, but if, say, RuneScape as a whole disappeared, then I'd have to find some kind of alternate pursuit that filled a decent amount of time. Yeah, there isn't really that many grindy games I can think of that kind yeah. of fill that much, or games that are like RuneScape. Well, would you guys go to RS3 if old school closed? 
I'd probably start an Iron Man. Um, maybe. I wouldn't. I don't know, since I never really played it. I, I may give it a shot, but I don't know if I'd stick with it. I think, I, yeah, I'd definitely give it a shot, but... Yeah. I, I think Iron Man was fun. Maybe an Iron Man show is interesting, like mm-hmm. the hardcore Iron Man. But other than that, I would probably just get Nine Nine Slayer on my level 3 skill and they just quit. I'd probably just borrow one of Ten and Miggy's accounts and just play that. Yeah. I think um, Iron Man Hour 3 is quite interesting. I would probably play it if I had the motivation to play three plus accounts at the same time. I just don't, so I haven't really bothered. But RS3 has some interesting stuff. I mean, it's got the whole pay-to-win aspect, but it also has an interesting meta game, and you've obviously you've got the option of Iron Man versus playing as a main. It'd be like a whole new and game for me, story. since it's way yeah, it's different, different than old school. No, I wouldn't know what to do. Like in the first podcast, Mickey said it's not so direct like old school is. They yeah. just train one thing and just keep doing that. Give dailies and all that. Dailies are a big thing in RS3, whereas in old school, we don't have dailies other than farming and weekly tiers of gothics for people who do that. Well, I wouldn't say that. With Nightmare Zone, we have her package per day. Oh, so true. That's a sort of that, thing. Battle Stars. Really yeah. Battle Stars. Battle Stars. Heroes. Heroes. Sand. You know, the but, sand. But sand buckets, yo. Yeah. yeah, the sand. But those, those are directed to your bank. Um, so. Would you get down to wings? Maybe if they would have made dead content, make a sort of a daily thing on those. Like, for instance, the coffin, the ogre coffin is a dead content. I've the thing about dailies, that. though, is it forces people to do them every single day. Especially yeah. XP dailies versus GP dailies, like Battle Staffs and her boxes. Yeah, that'd be yeah. tedious. I prefer were... weeklies like penguins. Yeah, I prefer weeklies as yeah. well. I and they were discussing that... the whole, like, daily thing on the previous live stream for JX Q&A and they were thinking of like someone's question was a daily thing and the whole chat exploded because like they're like we don't want RS3 like if this game's really against daily stuff and I think it wouldn't pass the poll even if it was pulled from the reaction. I don't reaction. think it would really fit old school. Yeah it wouldn't even really fit it. Maybe if the whole uh, new colony and stuff would have had it. Mod Matt K said that in his thread that he wrote, oh, that he authored and he read a lot of responses, one of the things people liked most about Old School was the fact that we didn't have dailies, whereas in RS3 it's a very important part of the game. Yeah. That could be changed over time, like how uh, uh, some stuff uh, changed over time, for instance, the GE. people didn't like the GE, but yeah. then again, people changed their mind. Grindy it's so nice. Love the green exchange. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, let's just hope old school never closes, so we never have to make these kind of decisions. <laughs> yeah. But with the recent graph of Mod Mac K, it strictly stated that it would, uh, you know, pursue to 2030. <laughs> I think we'll we're pretty fine. good. Well, it's old school's never going to close. Anyways, cool, though, moving on from that dark topic, if you could have one pet out of the pets that currently exist in Old School RuneScape, which pet would it be, and why? I think at this point, all of Souls knows that I want a Kree pet. Fantastic. A bird flying behind you, it's so big, it's awesome. But like, it takes so long for me to get, because Arma takes a little time to kill. And you could probably do it, you can do it efficiently, but it looks so nice. Sick. Um, I'd like the Penance pet, because it's just like a beast, but uh... Yeah, if there was a jubbly pet in the game, a jubbly bird, I'd like that. <laughs> oh, I'd like the purple cloud, a little chaos alley pet. I think it's cute. When it's floating around after me, yeah, probably choose that. Mm-hmm. I don't really like any of them, to be honest. Um, if I wanted something that's not in the game, I'd probably say something like um, Chin Chomper or Ferret, maybe, from Hunter. I... I'm not really sure, because there's a lot of uh, quests NPCs that I actually like the looks on. So it's a, it's a tough one. But I will, if there is a pet that you can't, like if there ex- exists a pet, it would be the Prince Black Dragon, because it's so badass with the freeze head. I like the Penance Queen pet quite a lot. I would go for it if it wasn't so time consuming with a 1 in 1000 drop rate. I also like the Carfight Princess, although it's very, again, it's very difficult to get due to the drop rate. 
And the new Wildy bosses, the Venonatus, that looks pretty cool. Spider. Yeah, the bear one, Callisto looks cool. Yeah, that well. too. I like the Vettian one as well. Because it has two forms and everything. Is that the action figure looking one? Yeah. Never mind. No, okay. <laughs> Looks like an action figure to me. What's that scorpion boss called? Is there a pet for that? Scorpio. Scorpio. Is there a pet for that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that? Scorpio. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Talk to the... oh, oh, okay. I thought they were a demi. No, they mm -hmm. are a demi, but they added the pet for it anyways. Okay. I think there's too many pets. There's yeah. a lot of pets. Yeah. yeah. When they're thinking game. about adding the Easter event pet, like oh my. The like thing with Scorpio was that the crazy archaeologist dropped the fedora in addition to the Odium and Malediction Ward drops, and the Chaos Fanatic had a chance of dropping the Chaos Elemental Pet, so they wanted to add something to Scorpio, other, well, to make it unique. So that was the unique okay. drop. Wait, I have a question. How come there couldn't be a small Corporal Beast pet, and why was it the Dark Core only? I assume they just wanted to make the Dark Core pet they rather than the Corporeal be Beast. Because the small Corporal Beast looked really cool. I think. Yeah, I wouldn't mind the yeah, small corporeal was... beast, but I don't know. I I like the dark it was... corporate. I don't know. It was because it looked silly. I can't remember what the reason was. It doesn't look that silly. silly. I just think it's silly to think like that. Like every other NPC except the corporal beast has a regular pet that is like looking like it's a. Uh, yeah, that's true. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> apart from penance, oh, so. Penance one's ugly, I think, though. Oh, it does look kind of ugly. It is kind of ugly. Fat. It's a beast. It's huge. I would actually like Bugs Bunny, or, well, the Easter Bunny. Just call Bugs it Bunny. Bunny. Yes. <laughs> I'm they glad they didn't add a pet with the Easter event. Oh, so everyone would have it out. Be way too many. The chocolate yeah. That would suck. <laughs> the chocolate the chompy one. I think it's too yeah, easy the, to the get. The chompy one should be like 1 5k. Yeah, I yeah. Think. everyone has one. Yeah. It does have high it's requirements like the, it's, to get it's the though. first skilling one, but yeah, it does have high requirements. But well, it, it's so you already get, killed like, a thousand take, of them. Doesn't it take you two hours to get like once you have the requirements? On average, two hours, yeah. yeah so yeah, I think it's too short. a lot longer. But like, then again, you already pets, had you killed need, a thousand. You do need requirements, like you need to get the stats to go kill that, so yeah, like, you can't really look at it like that. I think true. Like, isn't Colt oh. Pet like 2,000 hours or something? Which so. one? Court pet. Uh, probably. I think it's probably. 1 in 5k or something. Really rare. Mm -hmm. but, so, yeah. Nah, it's 1 in 3. Still very rare. Either way, yeah. 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 Moving on from the topic of pets, though, a somewhat related question is actually what is your biggest RS pet peeve? This refers to a minor annoyance or thing about old school that you find particularly frustrating at times. Well, I hated the whole Zybest thing. People are just spamming you if you have it when I just posted it like five seconds before. But that's gone now, so that's good. Um, I didn't like how if you wore a really cool skill cape, like Runecrafting or Slayer before, that people would just come up to you and say, can I have money? I'm like, no, you can't have money. Like, I'm not just some special guy here. You, could, you can like, go make your own money. It kind of pisses me off. But it doesn't really happen that much anymore, but still kind of makes me mad sometimes. Uh, mine relates to the one of the other questions. Have you taught like a friend to play efficiently? And when you tell somebody to do something, they ask you the question, and then they just say, "Nah, I'm not gonna do that." And I hate just that go too. Do something inefficient, because like, why ask in the first place if you don't want to take the tip? Uh, currently, it's probably motherload mine crashes, and they just come in and pretend there's enough veins for the both of you, <laughs> and then they ask, "Can't we share?" It's like, "No, mate, just hot worlds." It pisses me off, I guess, but it's share. not too annoying. <laughs> now with the expansion, it's not really a problem. Um, I was already just taking my answer, to be honest. So, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the most annoying thing is the gold spamming. Like the PMU, and you have it on public, but since Gen Exchange, I've had it to friends only. With the whole fact that I don't want spams, like, oh, blah, 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 like... <laughs> annoying or if you enter grand exchange you're always getting these people like trying to scam your money like trying to make you download something or this is me as well. yeah or swaps they've got better with it like when i have my private on like i'll get four instantly so it takes yeah, up my yeah, whole entire chat 
What annoys me more than anything in this game currently is being crashed on the Slayer task. And it's just, it'll be that one level 90, not using a cannon, not using piety, he'll just stand right next to me at Black Demons, and he'll just be hitting all the ones around my cannon, and he won't hop when I tell him to. And it, it, it gets on my nerves at times, especially at peak hour, like past 3 or 4 p.m. GMT when Slayer gets quite busy. I know the feel. You'll have to learn to flame them out. Yep, just tag team them. That's my other problem, actually. <laughs> lose the P mod. My other issue, or well, a minor annoyance, is whenever I say something in chat to people, I just get that odd person who completely freaks out because I'm a player moderator, and he'll ask me a million questions about it, even though I politely tell him, he's like, how do you become a mod? And I'll politely tell him how to well, have a secure That's account, right. be polite for all the rules, and... He'll ask me a whole lot of questions about it, and then when I can't give him the answers he wants, he'll get annoyed with me, or... Yeah, there's... Any stuff related to Slayer generally gets on my nerves, especially... Word, the people. problem. <laughs> but Finn, if he calls you Frank, would you mute him? No. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> it's the crashing on task, though. It, it literally happened to me during the podcast. I was killing Black Demons, and a level 106 came up with his cannon, and he put it down right next to mine. I asked him to hop. He didn't hop, so I had to hop. Yeah, one guy um, at Black Demon said there was, a, there was enough uh, Black Demons to have two cannons there, but three cannons is too much, he said. <laughs> and I was like, no, just hop. Two please. cannons? You want to hop, so I don't leave. It's the struggles of Slayer. Yeah, it's just those small things that get on your nerves after a while. But oh well. Yeah, and you have to deal with it daily, so. Daily, yeah. Uh... Perhaps the opposite of a pet peeve is what we're going to be looking at now. What is your favorite quality of life update added to Old School Inscope? I honestly like the tab to talk update. I'm like, where is it when Old School first came out? And I really like that one. I don't know why, I just feel like it's awesome. Um, it may not be like a huge thing, but like the scroll wheel to turn your screen. Like, I never really liked using the arrow keys, so I think the scroll wheel is the best. Same as G, just tab reply. Can wouldn't pay any, anyone without it. It's just like the best update ever. Um, probably static spawns and scroll wheel. Well, the smallest one that made a huge difference, I would say, is the either the whole um, going through the chat one to five and space to continue the dialogues helped tremendously for t doing certain things. Static spawns for me, probably, and as you guys said, the scroll wheel. It's uh, so nice not having to use my arrow keys, and static spawns are obviously ideal for Slayer, because it gives you a lot more... You don't have to use a specific world, you can just hop to any world, which makes a huge difference for finding worlds and doing tasks. Same with granite mining. Yeah. yeah. No. I really uh -huh. think I would have disliked Slayer if there wasn't static spawns, because... Uh, it's been really bad. Or, yeah, I had like yeah, 90 something Slayer when Static Spawns came out. I'm like, oh my god, what? This is awesome. Yeah, that really time for Blood Veld, it's something the old school team does really well, in my opinion. <laughs> quality of life updates. We've had so many yeah. really nice ones in the past two years. Also, like farming. Yeah, and like the ones for recrafting as well. Yeah. yeah. Like right click repair and glory tellies and that. Yeah, the glory tellies oh, yeah, are so awesome. Good. Like that too. Moving on to a slightly more philosophical question. How do you stay motivated to play old school RuneScape consistently? I think it's because of all the anime I watch, to be honest. Um, I just really enjoy the game, but I'd say CML helps updating it, just seeing like your progress and that it was efficient. Being in a clan and making small goals and long-term goals, because when you reach them, it just feels good. Yeah, just personal goals and being in the clan helps quite a lot. It means I'm online a lot more than I would be. Um, honestly, it's team speak. Um, cause I'm always in there. Um, so it's not like coming on to play RS, it's coming on to speak to people. Yeah, so. I forgot to mention yeah, that. that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, the social aspect really helps me motivate at least. <laughs> if it's Twitch, YouTube, or whatever. Like, anything that can have a voice. It would help tremendously. 
for me. Just to entertain yourself. Yeah. The c- knowing, well, having a clan and the social aspect keep me motivated. Even in, though, I mean, I'm motivated for Slayer, even though I'm not as motivated for overall. But having the clan and people to talk to you generally motivates me to log in every day and play as much as I can. So not just for myself, but for everyone else. Although I suppose we're all quite motivated at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Heck yeah. We've talked about this earlier in the podcast, but it has been asked as a question, so I suppose we'll look at it again in its own right. What are your guys' opinion on the Motherload Mine update? For people who are unfamiliar with the Motherload Mine update, an expansion was added with 64 new ore veins, which can be accessed with 72 mining by paying a 100 nugget or one-time fee to Percy the Prospector. You can The XP per album of loads has also been increased by around 10% due to this expansion because the veins are quite close to the bank chest. Well, I haven't been there much yet, but uh, Bonita and Immortals have like, just been raving about it, and Speed <laughs> as well, so... I think it's really cool, and I saw um, the XP rates. It's really nice, but Corey is kind of getting hate now that like because um because it's like Corey's still faster, but it's like no one will really do it because loads like almost as fast. Not almost, but like it's getting there, and, it, and the money you make from load makes it much better than Corey as well, and it's pretty AFK, and it sounds really nice to me. Um, I wouldn't say it's better than Corey. I'd say it's more on par now with the update. But I haven't been there yet, so I can just take the word from other people. It seems really good. You don't have to deal with as many crashers. And the XP is significantly significantly more, so I guess that's good. And so now it's, yeah, on par. As much as I love the update, like I've been here for the last, well, since release, basically, I haven't left. Um, I love it, like, no crashes, but I just think it's the XP rate shouldn't have increased. It's too fast, in my opinion. Um... It's getting like too close to granite. Like granite used to be like quite a bit better, and now it's almost a motherload's almost as efficient. So I think it's just too fast. But other than that, I love it because of the no crashes, and it's just more fun than it was before. Um, yeah, I really like the update. I've been here for like three days, um, like maybe two crashes. So and yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, fuck it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I entered this place before the podcast, and uh, I can say it's really good. Like, there's not many people that actually have access to the second floor. People that mostly bother us are doing the ground ones, because they don't have enough nuggets or something. Uh, but yeah, and they're also good that they removed the whole uh, trading of the nuggets, otherwise this would be kind of... People would only get 72 at like irons and then uh, never go to the load, like, I mean, the quarry ever again, just because of that whole fear factor. I haven't been to it myself yet, but I've heard many good things about the mobile load update from Bonita, Immortals, Lord Speed, various other people who have been doing it. What I like is that they fixed the crashing problem by creating a new area. I think it was a, a fair solution. Although I don't think they were, they should have made Motherload even faster. I mean, they made Quarry faster with the Varrock armor, but Quarry is so much more effort for no money that I don't think Motherload should have been improved as much as it has been in terms of XP. Um, I don't really mind the XP um, per hour, to be honest. I'd just rather it be like maybe 85 to 90 mining to enter up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But also, Model of Mine has had the more updates than Quarry. It also uh, the whole... devalued the, um, the shortcut, which I don't like that. The no, achievement value shortcut I'm talking completely about. Completely useless now. Because that was like, they made it like the best spot, and then, like, what, a few weeks later, they're just like, well, now we're going to put in an even better spot. I yeah, guess quite it, was like, the, uh, it was only the like a medium, rewards. Yeah, it was only like a medium reward, I'm pretty sure, so it's not that big of a deal. It's but... not so bad then. Yeah, if that was like an elite, that'd, that'd just be pointless. But. Yeah, but then again, elite gives you more ores in the model of mine, so it would um, increase your. Even, it increases your chance of higher ore when you're paid dirt. When you're, yeah. I'm not even sure that works. To be yeah, honest. If, when I was there, I didn't really feel like it worked. I've heard that it doesn't work, but I believe they're man. looking into Damn. it. Yeah. Marks a grace, and now this. Damn it. <laughs> 
God damn. Marks of Grace piss me off. Yeah. Piss me off. I just got the requirement and it's not even working for me right now. It's just stupid. Yeah. Slaved it all day. Did at four least, hours of fucking nightmare zone. Today. At least the cape looks doesn't good. Work. It doesn't yeah, work. I, I, I like the look cool. of the cape. I'm not like a Older. huge uh, fan of cosmetic items. Kind of, it's not really cosmetic, but I, I kind of like the look of it. I'm assuming yeah, they'll the fix one? the marks of grace update next week, probably, and uh, hopefully they can look into the fail door shield and mother load. They better, yeah, man. Nice. Made a bug for this. <laughs> then again, the it works. is. I thought you didn't need it to equip the shield. I thought it was just going to be standard, like, without the shield. Well, it doesn't really matter if you do or don't, because you don't really have an item in that slot anyway while doing it. Yeah. The, but it does... It doesn't work either way. So. Mm. Stupid Jagax. Fix your shit. <laughs> I'm sure they'll sort it out. In the meantime, though, I hope so. you can just enjoy the motherload update being as good as it is. Without also yeah, benefiting true. from the yeah, it's already higher tier okay. So, if you could lose all of your RuneScape knowledge and become a noob again, would you choose to do so? Essentially, this would be... You'd, it'd be like playing RuneScape again for the first time. You wouldn't have any of the knowledge you currently have, so you'd have that experience of being a noob again, rather than being the efficient, well-informed player you are now. I think for a long time I was that noob, like back in 2005 and six, didn't know what I was doing. And then old school, I just learned so much more knowledge because I was so young back then. And then the feeling of going back to that, I just don't really like it. I, I think I had a lot of fun before just f 2 king and doing all that. But I think now I this is just more fun for me. And I feel like I'm progressing a lot better than I was before in, in, in such little time. And I like it this way. Um, looking back on it, being a noob seemed rather fun back when I played in like 06, 07, but I think this is a lot more fun being efficient and knowing really what you're doing and knowing that you're doing things like as fast as possible. So I don't really think I'd like to be a noob again. And plus, you'd after you can't really just stay a noob. You'd eventually get more knowledge and then progress to like this stage again. So it's it's I don't know. I I, I wouldn't want to do it. I'd rather keep my current knowledge. Like I don't know. I never used to really achieve anything in RS when I was like shit. So I'd rather be like better at the game. I don't know. I not. I don't really care about nostalgia too much either. So then I'd rather just stay the same. Um, I like to play my RS free skiller, but I really enjoy the game more. Um, with the knowledge I know now. Well, I'm already a noob, so it doesn't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> I... Nah, all the joke aside, uh, I wouldn't want to lose it, but I am always having this thought that I'm always a noob and I always have any, everything to learn, like, I can learn anything new every day. I agree with what OAE said. I, I mean, being a noob again, sure, it might be fun rediscovering everything and learning to be efficient without already knowing anything, but I'd eventually get to the stage where I was efficient again, and I'd think... I wish I wasn't a noob for so long, because obviously I was a noob back in, say, 2005, 2006, and when I became efficient, so in 2009, I thought back and I figured, or I rather I wondered, if I had got efficient earlier, I would have met my goals much quicker, for example, so I probably wouldn't want to be a noob again, even though I would have that feeling of wonder and excitement that I had when I started RuneScape, and obviously I can't have that now because I know so much about the game. Exactly. Exactly, and they also say that power is the like knowledge is power. Yeah. And with power, you save time. Yeah, about nostalgia, like even even now in this game, like I I don't play for nostalgia, and I really didn't. Besides, like the first month of this game, I was played because I enjoyed. Agree. Like the nostalgia for most people, I'd say, is long gone. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I mean, I wouldn't change how I play the game up till now. But it would be nice to have had uh, stats much faster as. As Fimbo was saying, but then again, it, it wouldn't be the same thing. It wouldn't be you. Your gameplay would be someone else. You know, I, don't know, I just have that feeling. I don't know if it's just me, but I learned quite a bit coming to old school as well. Me too. That was pretty cool learning. Yeah, I learned was, everything pretty much. <laughs> it was I mean, really cool like learning stuff. Test. So Slayer, like what my rule crafting even was, I didn't touch it <laughs> until old school, and 
it's it was really cool learning all those kind of stuff. Even yeah, though I've been a high like level for a few years for before old school came out, I still learned a lot when I started playing old school. Just uh, more efficiency methods and such that I mean I was a high level back in the day, but I learned so much more in old school because I came into old school knowing a lot more than I knew back in the real 2007. Yeah, and I still learn things, like, maybe not as frequent, but I'm still learning. Yeah, and the biggest thing I learned was the about the store, how the store actually works and stuff like that, like how the value change and how much you can actually buy for each item you buy of a store and stuff like that. It was quite uh, interesting, and I don't want to re rejoin that. <laughs> I'd say being an efficient skiller and in a skilling community means that you still learn quite a lot of new things because new methods and new ideas are continuously being discussed. So our knowledge just now increases as the game goes on as a result yeah, of the people we're friends with and the discussions we have with clan members and other associates. Moving on from that topic though, this is our one off-topic question of the podcast. We have been asked, what are our favorite music genres? I'm really into, I like uh, rap, um, dubstep, and rock, but I think I listen to rap a little more. I don't really like the mainstream radio kind of rap. I feel like the rap way back in the day was so much better, and I just love listening to that. Artists like Nas and like Tupac, really nice. I love the like, how they like rap and like their like what their meaning is and their lyrics are just awesome. I mainly just listen to electronic music, but my favorite genre is chill trap. Sub <laughs> trap. Yeah, <laughs> you probably don't even know what it is, but great music genre. Mostly listen to rap, but I also listen to like a bit of trance when I'm skilling. Uh, yeah, mostly rap, like quite a lot of UK rap. Um, I like everything to be honest, except like um, classic and screamo emo. I don't have any favorite uh, genre. It's more like whatever I, I I do. Like if I am in the game and want to skill for hours and hours, I might put on some uh, trance or something like that to keep me motivated. Or if I'm playing like an FPS game, I might want some hardcore rock. I mean. It all Whatever comes mood, down to what I do, yeah. 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 To help me, keep me motivated, that's pretty much when I listen to music. To help me be motivated. I like alternative rock and electronic music, although what I'll play generally depends on my mood and what I'm doing in-game. Kind of like you guys. Now that that's out of the way though, here's one that's relevant to pretty much everybody who uses the Grand Exchange. What are your opinions on the GE limits? This is referring to the four hour buy limits of everything. I think the limits are pretty under control, but some of them might be a little too low or a little too high. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not the GE as much as Lazy Skiller is, but um, I, like, I don't do, I don't really merch off the GE much, and I don't really like, do um, that other kind of stuff, but. I've, they're pretty much what I've heard. It's pretty under control, and if they think about releasing the limits, it would kind of ruin the economy. Even though it's being damaged a lot from the GE, and other kind of stuff. But yeah, um, it's okay, I guess. I don't like that you have to like either have an alt or get some friends to help you buy out certain items when you need it. Like I've had to do that for darts and some, um, I think planks as well. Uh, I like the limits on most things. Most of them are like, you can't really use all the items you can buy within the four hour period. So I don't mind it. Um, I like the limit on darts. It stops people buying them out and just fucking abusing them. So I guess that's good. Uh, I don't really care to be honest. Um, I just go there when I need to, so. Yeah, um, the thing was, when I, when the first Grand Exchange first came out, it was kind of frustrated with the prices, how is the price going to be? And the limits were crazily low. And so they did some good attempt to actually increase it, but some of the requirements or limits I've noticed is kind of outbalanced. Sort of like battle staffs is like 5,000, while the aerobes is like 10,000. So it's kind of a nice gap. 
while selling the battle staff might be twelve thousand. So I don't see where they have trying to do there or what they're trying to achieve there. But I guess they're looking into how many actually coming into the game, how often does people want to sell them, and in big quantities. And also some other stuff that is craftable might not be the high up there in scale due to the fact that not many people do it. But I believe that they could do better. Like they can always do better with the limits. I like some of the limits. I think they're fair for smithing, at least for buying bars and crafting is mostly fair, though I think aerobes and battle staffs have the same limit. I the can cannonballs have a limit of seven K per four hours. I think that is somewhat reasonable, but it means you do have to buy cannonballs all the time because you could go through more than 7k in 4 hours quite easily, depending on what tasks you get. I also think the limit on some God Wars items is a bit low, 8 per 4 hours, so you can very easily use all those while flipping, and then you have to use an ult, so... Um, on the whole, I think limits are good, but a couple of areas that might need improvement. The cannonballs, I think, should be increased then, because if you get two smoke devil tasks like back to back, then yeah, well, there goes your cannonballs for four hours. <laughs> well, I've taken the my habit is now I will always have a hundred cannonballs bought ready in the GE, and so I just buy a hundred k at a time, and because you can buy yeah. overnight, that generally gives me enough cannonballs. You have to prepare yeah. before you do a yeah. certain skill, I guess. Yeah. If you just buy them overnight, it's not really a problem, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But if somebody I'm had zero really cannibals right. and just started Slayer, they could easily go through their first 7k before the 4 hour limit is up. True. Yeah. yeah. Not buying uh, overnight, though, I really didn't think that should have been allowed. I think you should only been able to buy stuff while you're on the game. Because you're, like, progressing on the game, even though it's not really directly progressing. It's still you're then progressing while you're offline. People would complain, though, and say, oh, it's not like the Grand Exchange, or oh, we would have more mm. topics about it, and they figure they might as well. Like, we voted in for having their standard Grand Exchange, as it is, like, in RS3, but still, like, it's still the same as it was in, back when it came out in 2007. So it's yeah. no different. Part of the reason why we need offline offers is because of time zone differences. For example, if I could only buy stuff during my day from people who are also online, it would be hard for me to get a lot of stuff because I play most of my day played is when most people aren't on because it's UK morning and nighttime in America because I live in Australia. So that is, if that we is didn't true. have I offline heard. trading, I would have a hard time. It was annoying. They never really thought about the, the time zones. Yeah, it's not as bad buying like cannibals when you're. Like sleeping, so the limit doesn't really matter because every four hours you could like get all these cannibals, and then when you wake up, there you go, you could slay for a couple of hours and kind of helps towards like the limits if they're bad or not. A difference with the GE we have now, rather than the RS3 GE, is I've noticed if you buy an item and then you sell that item, your buy limit doesn't reset. I noticed this recently when flipping spirit shields and god swords, it's kind of annoying yes. actually. It doesn't, because they, they didn't want to uh, implement that. Yeah, so now it's free if you fact. buy 10 Armador God Swords and then you sell 10 Armador God Swords, you can buy another 10 before the 4 hour limit is up, and you can't an Yeah, but Mod Ash talked about it as well, and he said that it was supposed to be like that for now. Yeah. Until I uh, checked out on stuff. Yeah, I think they it's probably are now. Yeah, they're probably collecting data right now and see how the market is, and then changing the G limits and stuff. Basically when, an anti-flip mechanic. Yeah, because yeah. basically what happened when it first came out, it was also this, uh, it was checking the size price because they have keep on track. So they basically just added in the limits and that made a lot of items scammable because they, they had a higher value than they actually are supposed to be. So people got scammed over that, over items, but yeah, you have pretty much calmed down now because people yeah. are aware of it. Yes, the topic of GE limits is quite interesting and it affects everybody. If you have any comments on it, be sure to let us know in the comment section. Moving on from that though, let's go way back in history. How did you find out about RuneScape for the first time? It was like, I think it was, I think I saw my brother play RuneScape in like 2005 and I'm like, what are you doing? 
and it's like he just found this game at like his freshman school, and then I'm like, okay. And then I kind of started playing it a little bit in 2005, but I didn't really get what I was doing, so I didn't really play. And then later in 2006, I'm like, this game's actually really fun, so I just started playing like after P, PK, and all the other cool stuff. I heard about it through friends at school, and I think I, I don't know if I joined right away, but I remember touching up on it for a bit, and then I quit. I went to, I think I played Habo and came back to it. But yeah, I found out through it, uh, through friends at school. Mm, same as always, found out through friends at school, and then I just had a free to play account for a couple of years. It took me like six months to go off to Tutorial Island. <laughs> just got frustrated and never logged on, but yeah. Um, I actually walked into the computer room at school and saw about 50 kids on the same game killing cows and I'm like, what the fuck's this? <laughs> so, I got home and actually started playing, so. Yeah, I joined back in 2005, 2006. I can't remember if it was before that or after, but it was during my school time. One of my friends took uh, me home to her. Uh, to play some RuneScape, or she showed the game, and I was like, what is this? Because I've just touched the internet, and she showed me RuneScape, and I was like, oh, this seems interesting, and she was like, yeah, full black is the best thing ever. I was like, whoa, yo, I gotta get it, you know? So I got, so I was stuck in Faldo for a while, just to Smith and mine. <laughs> That's basically how I made my first uh, money. And also I found out later on that you could run this uh, pure, uh, like rune essence to people that were uh, rune crafting airs. So I got my first skimmer by that. Got like 3k per run, I was so happy. Same as you guys, I found out about RuneScape from friends at school. My friend mentioned to me at lunch and he didn't actually say RuneScape at first, he called it Runescape because he was a bit of a noob. <laughs> And uh, huh. so I went home, and after some searching, I figured out what it was, and I started playing it. I, I became a member the same day. I've actually never been free to play. Really? Oh, I was free to play for a long time, because it was free to play, so figure, why not? Yeah, me too. It was like so, not until one year or two years later on that I became members, because I heard that it was so much cool, so I got my first ham outfit and looked so swag. <laughs> I, I got was my first pretty early on, I remember, but yeah, not on the first day. I just remember asking my mom if I could get members, like, I think it was like two months after I started playing, and my stats mm -hmm. were like 40 based or something. And uh, probably not even that good, but I just remember I was decent at the game for, from back then, and yeah, I got members. I recall being confused because the tutorial did not discuss member skills, and obviously so when I started playing, I didn't really know what agility or thieving were. Because That's they had it like mentioned in Tutorial always. Island as they were member skills. Yeah, that's why I liked the charm of it because you you were like, oh, agility, what is this? I have to test it out, you know. Like it's I don't know. It was kind of a nice feeling when you first figure out, oh, I can fletch, or oh, nice, yeah. I can do the um, agility, or wow, Slayer, what is this, you know? Fun times. Something new. Okay. If you, if everybody here could only train two skills for the end of, until the end of time, what two skills would you choose to train? For the purposes of this question, we're going to assume Slayer is one skill, even though it trains other skills passively. Same with Runecrafting, Vire, Abyss, and such. I'm going to go with Slayer and Runecrafting. I can slay forever if I Runecraft. I'm going to go with that. I'm actually going to say what G said as well, because those are the two longest skills, and so I can play the game for as long as, uh, long as possible. Probably agility and magic, because if you don't imbue while you're doing agility, you're a scrub, so... <laughs> Gotta get those imbues in, boys. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably Hunter and Runecrafting, to be honest. I like both of them skills. You'd make bank. Yeah. Can't spend it on out. <laughs> <laughs> This is a mad twelve dwarf. I would go for smithing, and uh, if, if you could use granite chain slayer. Otherwise, I would go for mining to afford uh, the bars and stuff. I'd go with slayer and runecrafting as well. I've always been a big fan of both skills, and I would be quite happy if they were the only skills I joined. 
We are now moving on to our last question, and this is a question that comes from the comment section of the second Solus podcast. We were asked by the illustrious Vesfold, why do you skill and what do you get out of it? A philosophical self-reflection. Well, I skilled because honestly, I was in a PVM clan and then I came to Solus because I was completely bored of pvming and i'm like wait there's another side to this game so i started runecrafting after i finished slayer i'm like you know what runecrafting is actually pretty cool so then i was runecrafting for a while and then i made a lot of money and i'm like wow skilling is pretty profitable so then i just moved on to other skills and i'm i'm not really a big fan of like fast 99 so i was i like doing like stuff that's slow because it, like it's a better achievement in my opinion so then i was doing that and then i was doing farming while runecrafting because i really wanted to farm cape and like I think farming is really good. I need to get out of the way if you're maxing or not. And I I just really enjoy skilling because it's just kind of it's like another side of the game that I never knew about. Like reflecting on like back of our newbie days, like uh, the previous question, and I did never really skilled ever. So it was really cool um, raising stats that I've never like trained before, like rune crafting, or I've never farmed before b- before coming to old school. I didn't really know how to do it, so I learned that. And it was pretty cool learning that. I, I just think that skilling, with skilling, you can improve your rank on the high scores pretty fast. And with the high total level and higher XP, it's pretty cool progressing on the high scores. I think that's pretty cool. I think um, Crystal Math Labs like tracks like your progression, and you can compete on there as well for uh, efficient hours played and certain records you can do, which makes you know like skilling more fun. If you achieve those records, I'm all right. Uh, I've never really thought about it as like a philosophical thing, but I'll try my best. Uh, I skill because it's my favorite thing to do on the game. It's it passes time very well. It's a huge time sink. Um, it's just really fun to do. And I guess what do I get out of it? Well, I chase ranks kind of, so I'd like to get top page. So it's mostly for like the the end goals I set and just to reach them it's kind of rewarding and for maxing i'd say maybe sad but it's, it's probably one of the best achievements i've got either irl or online just skill for personal achievement uh i enjoy it as well it's definitely my favorite thing to do i, I used to hate skilling actually i was like a pk a bit of a hothead I used to flame skillers all the time but once i actually tried like tried it out loved it so yeah just personal personal achievement enjoy it I couldn't really see myself doing anything else in the game, like, currently, so, yeah. I just, like, personal achievement is the main, main thing. Um, for me, it's just all the different methods you can do with, like, say, fishing, free tick, water, tick, AFK, and what I get out of it is, I don't know, probably a treat off my girlfriend, I guess. Well, main reason why I started skilling was because of the whole money part, so I've was having this thought in my head that maybe I should try and see what is the best way in each individual skill to make the most money out of. So I w- I'm always referring to GP per XP whenever I do a skill. So if I can do, for example, stamina potions and make like one GP per XP, I would rather do that than doing maybe like a super energy with was two GP per XP when it first came out but then slowly I seen that if more and more gone to like uh, people don't uh, want to waste enough time and so most skillers that have made tons and tons of money often overprice uh, values and stuff uh, kind of <laughs> makes my whole plan uh, goes to dump but I still try and keep up and do my best but there's some certain skills that I've just stopped completely doing it on. For example, construction will always be 100% loose, no matter how you see it. For me, it's I enjoy the progression associated with skilling in old school. Although experience has no putative meaning in the real world, it is a quantifiable measure of our account progress and success in old school Inscape. So I see experience as a benchmark for account progress for me personally. I don't see money or say how many cosmetic items you have as a measure of progress. I know some people do. And with skilling, 
every time you log in, you can make consistent progress towards the personal goal that you set, even if you only logged in for a short amount of time, where the same is not necessarily true if you're pursuing GP via PVM or something like that. I like the metagame as well, uh, and the complexities associated with skilling. There's a lot to talk about, to analyze, to discuss with other people, and of course the, the grind and the competition are fun. Yeah, I, you could say that. Not everybody sees skilling and experience as a measure of their account success. I've known many rich merchants who they measure their account success by how much money they have. But for me, and I guess for most of you guys, it's you measure your account success by how much experience you have, and some of you by how much EHP you have, because some experience yeah. is worth more than others. I mean, that's basically what most people do. They have their own measures that they go after, and if you can't follow those measures, you're dumb or you're not worthy. It's what I call the different groups in RuneScape that have been individual like most people see if you don't have a, a level 126 combat account you suck in the game or if you don't have a 99 slayer as a 126 you suck you know like, this is, is all these questionable things that most people see and it, it's, fine. it's fine on people that aren't in their specific groups yeah but i personally look at yeah experience and ehp like finn said yeah and being in the PVM scene for a while, like I realized how um, awesome like it was to get all these sick drops, like Sarah Hilt, B rings, Armor Hilt. I felt like it was so awesome getting those. And now that being in the skilling like scene, it's really cool like, um, achieving your goals that you set for a ninety nine, or maybe it'd be a two hundred mil, or. Yeah, because you can't really measure it any other, like, uh, with combat, you usually measure it with drops, or associated with drops, rather than uh, experience with skilling. Skilling is more XP-based, in my opinion, rather than just going for the 99. <laughs> I'm also really happy that I was first, I PVM first, then a skilling, cause so, so I know both. Because if you skill yeah. first, it's kind of harder to learn PVM. I don't know why, I just hear from people, how, oh, I, I, they're skillers first, and oh, I can't PVM, I don't know how. This I feel like XP waste. Yeah, I feel like if I PVM first, then skilled, I really would like. That's how I'm gonna go back to it because I've known what it was like. If you're a skiller first, it's kind of hard to PVM. But if you're have already PVM before, you know what it's all about. What the achievement is of getting a sick drop or maybe a pet now that I might go for after I achieve my yeah. skilling goals. Then again, I have so much more time to learn. I mean, I have, I enjoy PVM a little bit by little, but. Skilling is where I mostly have knowledge about. I've just... personally, since playing or well, since playing RuneScape, I have PK'd, I have PVM'd, I've played many games, and I've skilled. Out of all those things, I found skilling to be the most fun long term. I like PVM, but I just can't stick to it. After a couple of weeks, I get bored because I've met my money goals, and whereas with skilling, it keeps me entertained for months at a time, which nothing else really does in RuneScape. Really? Yeah, I'd also well, say that I like skilling the most because for the most part it's not really RNG based, so what you put in is what you get out. Like, say you're PVMing, say you're going for a specific drop, from your first kill to your last, it's like the same progress you've made. You've made none until you actually got the drop, so. Yeah. I still think it's really fun though. I really like PVMing. It's really oh, yeah. fun. If you like it, of the then game. by all means do it. Yeah. It just depends on your outlook. Some people, as I said, they measure experiences, their account, a measure of their account progress. Some people use money, some people don't have any measure and they just play purely for fun and they don't have long term goals. But we're those not people all, usually I'd say different. burn out. You don't really yeah. have goals. I don't really I don't know, for me I don't if I didn't really have goals, I don't think I would play as much or it, eventually it's just not be as motivated. Value. The entertainment value, it's a game. You need to be entertained in order to play yeah. it. If you're not motivated or entertained enough, you just quit playing yeah. it. Yeah. Basically, you it, still, so. You still set goals even if you do PBM and PK, to be honest. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. Fastest kill, kill streaks, all that. A certain amount of money like made from drops, or getting every drop in the game, or something like that. Yeah, I think you can make a high score drop, like a, like a high score is for how fast you can kill something. That'd be really cool. 
be yeah. so RNG based low. Yeah, yeah with PKing you can just do like kill streaks and. No, I mean like how fast you kill up. Well, yeah, that's true. Never mind. We have challenge like the uh, ring, the ring challenge, Lord of the Rings challenge, which I include getting all the four rings at the kings. Yeah. I was so close yeah. to getting that one time. I was so mad. I've had it before. So close. Sure, it's RNG based, but it's still like a challenge. People are still go yeah. for it. Yep, skilling means different things to different people, and we don't all use the same measures for experience. I suppose that's the yep. conclusion we can draw from this. So, mm -hmm. what we get out of skilling is different for everybody, because we all have different reasons for skilling, even though, superficially, yeah. they may be similar. So, sure. how are you guys measuring the whole skilling thing? Leave a comment below. Yeah. That concludes <laughs> all the questions that we were asked by both the thread, given, and the YouTube comments. This means we are now going to be moving on to the main topic of this podcast. If you couldn't deduce it from the background, what we want to talk about is third-party enhancements that affect old-school RuneScape. These fall into two categories. We have, on one side, we have clients. Clients that perform functions that the official client does not. Examples of these are OS Buddy and RuneLoader. They have a lot of features as experience jobs, experience trackers, item overlays, and you know all the things that those clients do that the official client doesn't do. So it gives you, it's an enhancement to your gameplay and it gives you a significant advantage. The other category of enhancements that we want to look at are those that help you skill micro efficiency. These are mouse keys and AHK. By using mouse keys and AHK, you can skill more consistently and more efficiently for a longer period of time with less fatigue because of how you can reprogram your keyboard with scripts that allow you to click without using your mouse. This is obviously affects a lot of skills and specifically it allows you to do methods of training that you may not be otherwise able to do, such as one tick carams or consistent free tick fishing, methods like that. So I'd just like to know, how does everybody feel about these two different types of enhancements? So I didn't know much about AHK coming to Solace, so I'm like, so um, I was taught how to use it and what it was, and after doing it, it made like room crafting so much better when you bank and it's faster. And I'm like, wow! And like, I was surprised that it wasn't like bannable, like an offense. And I'll, and then it kind of is in a sense if you abuse it, and and it's like kind of like uh, the way you do it. If if it, be like one input, one output, or like diagonals, it's kind of like more risky to be banned or and if you abuse it. Um, for AHK and mouse keys, when I first started playing, I didn't use either. Uh, I eventually got started to use mouse keys and then eventually moved on to AHK and never used diax. I recently started using diagonals once I max and I just have one to the X. But I thought, like, if you have one diagonal, there's, it doesn't really matter, you might as well have more. So I have, uh, I think I have three in the script I'm using for wines. And. I don't really see anything wrong with it. Like, yeah, it makes the game easier, but it's more enjoyable, I think. It's, like, it's, it's not against the rules, so it's fine. Some players, if it was against the rules, some players would definitely be banned by now. And I'm um, about OS Buddy. Uh, I don't really use it. The only time I ever really use it is for Slayer. And I think it's fine, but I don't really like how you can pay to get more advantages. I think it should either, I think it should be completely free or should be an actual add-on to the, the game, like the actual RuneScape client. I don't use OS Buddy because I don't like using it. The only time I use it is to check XP rates. Um, I just don't really think it provides many benefits for me personally. And I think it provides disadvantages in some skills, such as RuneCrafting with teleport lag. Uh, so I don't think OS Buddy is that big of a problem. I think it's necessary for some skills though. Which is like kind of a bit unfair for Slayer, particularly. Um, yeah, I just think it's a bit of an unfair advantage to people that don't want to pay the extra money. Um, for AHK, I use just drop downs. I don't use diagonals. Although I haven't really got like an opinion against people using diagonals. I just don't find it enjoyable personally. I don't really care what other people do. I used to like dislike people using diagonals because I was a bit salty, I guess. But now. 
kind of grown up a bit and I don't really care how other people play, I just focus on me. So, yeah. Um, for the most part, I like OS Buddy. I just don't like it for room crafting because of like the teleport lag, stuff like that. Um, it seems to, for me, like the bank opens a bit slower. I'm not sure. But, and AHK, I hate people who use it, like Diagnose, because I'm more money. <laughs> Lies. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> You're a button smasher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, like seriously. Uh, I enjoy it. It's pretty fun to do. Um, more relaxing uh, with diagonals. Like, uh, I like one tick grams. I like banking fast. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, the thing is how I see it, it's mostly on the morals of a RuneScape player. Do you want to play it as it's meant to be played, or do you want it to play with some advantage to save a lifetime, like time, that you don't really want to... like you want to invest into something else? That's how I see things. So Always Buddy uh, has this whole program that you can pay in order to get more feature than if you would have had if you didn't pay. But it's still open for everybody. But the feature that it offers, like it still has to offer some pretty nice stuff for people to actually pay so they can keep on paying for it. But I feel that that is a disadvantage because that's not, everybody can't afford the money they just want to spend on the RuneScape uh, membership. Maybe they spend those money now on uh, always body instead of uh, on membership because bonds is out so they're feeling that uh, I can make 950k a day easily so it shouldn't be a problem and uh, HK is a free program uh, you need the knowledge about how to script it but there is a lot of skilling in the skilling community basically that knows a lot about this it takes some time to get used to it but it's fairly simple and it's open for everybody. So I feel that HK, I mean, it's okay. Then again, morals. Do you want to save time or do you want to be persistent and just play the game as it was meant to be played? That's an interesting distinction, actually, that you brought up and was mentioned previously by a couple of other people. OS Buddy has a paid element to it. So while you can get some features free, the most useful features, in my opinion, come from having Pro. Specifically for Slayer, the ability to see how many you've got left on the top left and see it go down every time you get a kill, as well as the ability to see how many cannonballs in your cannon are both very useful. AHK is obviously quite a game changer for many skills, but it is free and anyone can use it, whereas not everybody can use OS Buddy Pro. I think the only reason we have clients like that is because when people came to start playing old school, they didn't want to be playing like it was back in 2007. People wanted stuff like HP orbs and XP drops because we had those in 2010 and later. They were very popular updates. OS Buddy managed to capitalize on that and introduce a whole lot of other useful features that the developers don't seem to mind having. The Jagex team seem to like OS Buddy and it's safe to use, so... Yeah, I think we wouldn't get something like OS Buddy if this was three or four years ago, but Jagex on the whole is more lenient towards that kind of thing now, I'd say. Yeah, and also they probably don't want to invest time in actually making it happen, kind of like how some stuff they want to keep fresh, so they, it's up to the users. Well, the so user much of the community uses OS Buddy. When you look at the statistics, sometimes it's... Uh, like 80% of online players are using OS Buddy at that time, which is yeah, from, very significant. I've noticed it's gone down though. It used to be a lot higher than it currently is. Like the other day, it was only 50%. FGP. So I think it was definitely a decrease in usage over the last couple because of Because of the FPS drops, I've had a lot of lag with the clients. Yeah, there's like, quite a lot of problems with it. Yeah. It uses a lot of my CPU. Like other more demanding games don't for some reason. Yeah, I've heard that too, that the OS Buddy client is quite CPU intensive. So you could say that as it gets more sophisticated, fewer people might use it because they find it gets laggy for them. Yeah. Also back to what our morals was saying about one tick karams, like people may say that's OP, but it does take a, I'd say quite a lot of skill to get used to and to perform it for a long period of time. Um, 
I tried a few inventories of it. I didn't really do it for a long time, but it was hard, and I think the most I could do one taking at a time. I think I got like eight or nine in a row, and uh, it takes a lot of skill. And like what Dreary did it for what thirty hours, something like that, straight. Yes, and yeah, it's, it's it's really impressive. Even though it may be, I don't know, not intended that you should be able to do something like that, but. I believe that most people would actually go away from always buddy when they add in the whole uh, experience. Like I think the experience thing, like you can see how much XP you get, is a game feature that most people actually desire for. And since yeah. it's not a pay to a pay feature, people use always buddy for that. Considering that almost everybody here uses OS buddy, what's your favorite feature? Well, XP tracker. Yeah, XP per hour. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much the only time I use it, like if I want to actually see my XP per hour in a certain thing. I'm usually yeah, just on the main client because... I mean, the most thing I have is the whole uh, stat reset. You can see a timer on when your stats is going to be reset. It's really good when you're doing, for example, Baroque Nightmare Zone. When you're trying to get points, you can or see on, a, on your orb. HP orb that yeah. when it goes up a little bit, and you can see when exactly you can uh, press on the key to, in order to make it uh, drop down to zero again. For, I like for the cannonball example. timer, it's pretty cool too. Yeah, like all the timers is really useful. For all the cannonball, yeah. Core. Yeah. For like if it decays, oh. Yeah. yeah. Even, even with that timer, I've had it decay before. Yeah, so but... I'm looking at it, and then like you look at it like at five minutes left, and you're like, eh, I'll be fine. Because what it does, it. it's it plants it, but the tick makes it so it's inconsistent. Because they they put in a certain timer, like it have a certain timer on it, but since the tick system is so weird, you can't really by a hundred percent determine when it's supposed to be like decaying. But you can have yeah. a understanding, like an average number. Yeah, yeah that's why it's a nightmare zone. It's yeah. never really accurate. So always, always pick it up one or two minutes before it's actually decaying. So yeah. Yes, uh, as Finbar said, yes, we have enough time. Yeah, so you guys are saying that probably your favorite feature overall about OS Buddy is the ability to see your XP per hour. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, for Mainly, yeah. And timers. Yeah, being like an efficient skiller, I'd say that's like the most I think that's true thing. for most high-level skillers. I mean, it's easy enough to track your XP per hour manually, but it's very nice just having OS Buddy do it for you. And you can look at it, you can compare with other people very easily. Yeah, it's... and if somebody says like you're lying getting a certain, like, yeah, doing a certain skill, you can, you can show proof, them. So, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something evidence, you can just take a picture of it and then you show. Yeah. Like, we have seen a lot of people posting their own mining rates at Modelo Mine since the update. Yeah. We've yeah. just seen how much they gain and stuff. Like if somebody if somebody said that beforehand, they'd be like, "Yeah, it's not possible," but <laughs> there is proof. So, oh, I'd yeah. assume they weren't tracking accurately and they made some mistake. Whereas with OS Buddy, you can very easily test accurately. Yeah. Because if you're doing it one more hour or so, you can see that in the XP. If you're getting a past yeah. the one hour, you can definitely see that is actually legit. And over the whole day, you can see how efficient you are if you don't reset it. That's what I usually yeah. did. Just left it on yeah. for say like twelve hours if I was just doing one skill, and by the end of the day, you'd still see like, well, it's still pretty efficient, even with breaks. Yeah. You know, I'm you know, um, I'm for it. If people like it's people based, I mean, it shouldn't be bannable. But then again, it's again the morals. Like, if you want to save the time, you use it. Like, you don't have to think too much when you're using always buddy, for example. Or when you're using AK, you don't have to think to drop it too much. Looking at moral like issues, person. mouse keys, when they were originally invented for Windows as an application, it was designed to help people who either had some kind of disability or they weren't able to use the mouse because you can just control the mouse using the keyboard. Now, that's obviously been applied to RuneScape to make your clicks more consistent and more accurate. Do you think somebody is a worse skiller for relying on AHK or mouse keys to achieve good rates? Or do you think that no. everybody should be doing that and no. It, no one's better or worse for not using AHK? Well, no, it makes things people. easier, but it's kind of hard to do like one tick arms or something like that. So at that, that, that point, it's kind of skillful how long you can do that for. Um, it, doing uh, Cory for a long time with AHK, that takes some 
some skill like with uh, your stamina for how long you can endure that for. I think that's pretty cool. I see yeah, I HK it. more of a, like, uh, for example, if Giants would have had something new like Model of Mine before there was Quarry, but then they just instantly added Model of Mine, and people found out that that is better XP, they would go and do that. It's kind of the same with HK, like they feel that, oh, this is going to increase my XP rates, I will do this. That's how I see it. Mm, I see it, so it's like more convenient. Okay, finally. Uh, I'd say. <laughs> but, uh. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say, but, uh. Rip. Wow. Um. Oh, yeah, I'd say, like, it, not at all, but if somebody can do it manually, I'd say it's more impressive, yeah. definitely. I, th- I think I respect manual players probably a bit more, but I don't think they're, like, better players. I just respect them for not giving in and using it, I guess. I don't know. I agree. So. As you know, most most of us use AHK, most efficient skillers do. How do you feel about people who use diagonals? Because it's an action that is seen to be in a grey area at times because of it does a mouse move and that's not possible with mouse keys, I believe. But it's something that's possible with AHK. Do you think diagonals are fair to use? Well, my opinion wise, like when I see diagonals, I feel like wow, they're not even using their mouse. It's kind of like cheating. Like my first opinion was that when I saw it, when I, saw, I think I saw a dreary stream for like ten minutes doing it or something, and I'm like, wow, that's possible in this game. Like, why aren't you banned? And then I'm like, and then I kind of being in the skilling clan for longer and like around the skilling scene, I kind of figured out like people just do like their own thing, and I kind of focus on my thing. But I still don't really like diagonals. I think it's like overboard. It's my opinion. But I feel like manual players are like are, like they're pretty cool with how they do like room crafting or how they bank. It's pretty cool. Just to and quickly I, I clarify, so for players who don't know what diagonals okay. are, a diagonal movement with AHK is where you do a vertical and a horizontal mouse move in the same action. So the mouse moves diagonally, essentially. It doesn't in one key press. It doesn't move. It's not like two key presses to do it. You can do it in one click. Which you can't do with mouse keys, obviously. I'm fine with it. I, I've like thought about it for a while before using it, and surely somebody would have been banned by now if they've used it. And nobody has, so I'm fine with it. And you can you can still mess up with diagonals. It's not like coordinates where you're not going to mess up at all. So I'd say it's fine. I used to not like people using them, but I don't really care anymore. It's just like, use them how you want. Like you're playing at your own risk, but even though you're not really giving a ban for it, so it's not really a risk, but yeah. Uh, I think they're fine, yeah, I don't really care. They just play how you want. Mm, I find it more enjoyable, to be honest. Um, my mouse goes like a diagonal anyway with one movement, so why can't like, just one button do that? I mean, I don't mind it. Since, uh... It's just an input and output, like, it's kind of like if you would have had a disorder, you would like to move your mouse, it's kind of the same thing, you didn't have your hands, it's kind of the, it's kind of like you moving your own mouse, like, it's not like you can't move your own mouse in one second to the next thing, like diagonal, so I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, just, sure, it kind of feels dumb, you just press a button and it moves, but it's kind of the same as you would have moved it anyways, it takes the same amount of time. Depending on the DPI. I agree. I don't see a huge issue with diagonals. It's just the way of using them, and it's apparently within the rules, so you may as well. But now that we've all essentially agreed that diagonals are okay to use, what do you think about players who use uh, AHK that say 1 to 2 or 1 to 3, and they don't get banned for quite a long time, even though they're technically breaking the rules? I mean, do you think that makes AHK as a whole look bad, or yep. what's your opinion on that kind of thing? makes it look bad and the whole subject's pretty unclear, like the rules are in a grey area because of it. Um, yeah, I just think one-to-one essentially is okay, anything past that is going a bit too far. Then so many people use it, if too many people use it, it's getting a bad reputation by all the people and they are afraid to use it, then you yeah, might ban them because many people start using it, more and more getting banned for it, so they are like scared of using it. That's what I think will be created, and people 
will stop slowly and slowly stop using it, while other people know that they would not ban you if you use one to one. They would just keep on doing it, and they don't really care if they ban for it because it's a stupid thing to get banned for. Um, I agree with Bon. Like I think it's fine one to one, uh, and one to two, and one to three. I think you should be you run the risk of being banned. Um, I know I wouldn't risk my account for one to two or one to three. One thing though is that mouse keys has a one to two feature in it, which is kind of that's allowed, but using it with AHK is possibly running a risk of a ban, so that's sketchy. So I wouldn't use it. I saw a Reddit post by uh, Mod Mac K R Ronan, and apparently one to one is still at a risk. It's just less. Yeah, because they don't want to be like they don't want to just come out and it. say why because yeah. you can misinterpret it. Well, since it can be used for macroing, they can never really condone it because people will take it the wrong way and then yeah. they just look bad because they've said it's something that's not really true. Um, so, I, sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, I don't really care if people use stuff like that, to be honest. Um, they're doing that at their own risk, just like botting. Um, I'm not going to go all hot-headed on someone who's botting. Um, it's their own risk, I guess. They're going to get banned in future. Yeah, I'd say... One of the downsides of people using those kind of methods is it gives AHK as a whole a bad reputation. So, let's say you talk about AHK with people who aren't particularly knowledgeable. They might think, oh, you're using an illegal thing, all AHK is bad, etc. But it's only because they've heard cases of people using illegal AHK and being banned for doing so, when yeah. many people use AHK safely, and it's generally been fine. That's where I was going into as well, like, bad reputations. It's really only at your own risk at the end of the day, like how far you want to go with it. So, yeah. with AHK being so good to use, if you guys met someone who was trying to become an efficient skiller, but they didn't know about AHK or masks or anything like that, would you immediately teach them how to use that kind of thing? Or would you encourage them yep. to learn it at their own pace and their own time? I would teach them how to use it. But like, I, I don't know about diagonals. If I tell them right away, I'd say, I'd, I'd tell them, but I'd say, like, use at your own risk. Like, I'd, yeah. I wouldn't teach them. I would just more be like, uh, do you know how to make a script or not? If they don't, I would just give them so they can test it out themselves. And if they ask, how does this work? I would say, what each number has a pixel to it. And they will, and they will have to figure out themselves because I don't like to spoon feed people. Like, you have to do your own thing, and if you don't know about it, and they, they're being like, oh, but why can't you tell me? I would be like, yeah, go and Google then, if you're going to be so mean to me, you know? I'm trying to help you here. I believe it's very important for somebody to know how to use their own scripts. Like, um, I've taught people how to use AHK before, but I don't just hand them a script and say, go for it. I want them to learn how to write their own script so they understand completely what everything does. I think it's very dangerous when people are given AHK and they don't know what it does, and then they try and modify it themselves and they might end up making an illegal AHK, just because they're ignorant. Mm. One to eight. <laughs> I've seen yeah. it before. One to eight. I wouldn't tell people to, to use it, I'd ad, like, advise them to use it. It would be better, to be honest. It's their own choice at the end of the day, it's up to them if they want to do things like quicker in a sense of like, like being consistent with how you drop things or you want to bang faster it's up to them and like if they know the risk themselves then that's fine if they want to go and if they want to pursue it so generally you would help somebody with ahk but you wouldn't necessarily just hand them a script and tell them to start using it that's what you guys are saying. Yeah. yeah pretty much so what if you met a noob who didn't know what os buddy was they were just using internet explorer for example would you teach them? Would you show them about OS Buddy as well? Because it provides a lot of benefits, obviously. OS Buddy or just the, the normal client. I think playing on the web browser is just disgusting. Are <laughs> <laughs> well, they getting rid of it as well? You backspace. Yeah, yeah they're getting rid of it. Yeah, for Chrome. Just off your account. I have not touched that since pretty much the beginning of the game. Yeah, I would just either teach them to tell them to go and download a regular client. I wouldn't tell them about the OS Buddy unless they asked, "Oh, who is that guy that uses a, a Twitch? What is that client called? Like, yeah. what is he using?" And then I would tell them because you know, 
straight up, I wouldn't tell them. I think and it's... I would... Sorry, go on. No, I would just say either that or I will tell them how to fix it so you can use the RS3 client and then just modify that. I think it's important for a new player to get used to playing RuneScape on a regular client and then maybe they can look into using something like OS Buddy. I think if they start using OS Buddy from the start, they might get... They become very dependent on it, and they probably have a lot of trouble if they suddenly had to use the regular client for some reason. So yeah, I would and also, teach someone how to use OS Buddy, but not immediately. I don't know if they were a noob, because I think it might be detrimental to them long term. Yeah, joining Solus, I think Dobbs or Dreary taught me. I think Dreary was the kind of showing me how to use it, and then Dobbs is like, this is what it is, then you should use it. I'm like, oh, okay, and then I use it like day one of joining Solus and like TS, and that's pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, also, I everyone knew in Solace, I see. I show them OS Buddy if they're not already using it, because it's really helpful for vision scores. And I also believe that if too many people are dependent on it, they lose some of the knowledge about RuneScape. Like, they lose uh, how does uh, the whole thing works, like yeah. the whole game in general. Like, they don't have the same feeling as we had when there was no OS Buddy. Yeah, and OS Buddy is only really a thing because of the prior knowledge people have yeah. of like how to do things. Same with Crystal yeah. Math Labs. Foot made it because he knew about all this kind of like um, like the whole EHP aspect, the efficiency aspect. That's why Foot and the other guys kind of made Crystal Math Labs, along with OS Buddy, Matthew, and is is it just Matthew or somebody else? Uh, it's it's a somebody. Couple of people. Yeah. I think it's much better to learn using the regular client. It's a bit like a driving test, and you learn. Like using a automatic car, can't really drive a manual afterwards. Same as way if you learn with OS Buddy, it would be pretty difficult to play on the regular client afterwards. It's a good analogy. You get used to the features. Automatic versus a manual. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, you guys are, uh, well, collectively, were in favour of AHK and OS Buddy, but we wouldn't necessarily teach a new how to use them immediately. Prefer to make them learn how to play the game, say naturally at first, and then. Show them those yeah. methods after they get used to it. Yeah, yeah I think how it's how it's the works. Yeah, it's interesting. If anybody watching wants to share their opinions on third party enhancements that affect gameplay, so AHK, Mouse Keys, OS Buddy, feel free to tell us what you think in the comments. This wraps up the main topics we've had for the podcast. We've uh, covered everything we planned on covering, so. Before we end, I would just like to ask, are there any final remarks or concluding statements that you guys want to add? Yeah, do whatever you want. Don't listen to people. Don't try and, like, if you want to do something and someone else tells you, no, don't do that, you suck, don't do it. Just keep on doing what you would do best. Focus on these, man. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's your own thing. You're playing the game because of your own goals, what you want to achieve. That's at the end of the day, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy my display picture for this podcast. <laughs> for Apple. If you have questions for the 4th Solace podcast, be sure to leave them in the comments section with your RuneScape name so we can mention you when we ask the question. Thank you, everybody, for watching. The 4th Solace podcast will be made available on the 1st of May. Or the 30th of April, so you'll just have to see. If you have As any... always, timestamps will be in the description. Yes. Finally, Thanks for watching, guys. Credits to Mickey for providing the background picture and everything relating to the actual recording. So, thank you, Mickey. If thank you've got you, any Mickey. comments, Thanks, feedback, Mickey. questions, Thanks. be sure to leave them in the comments. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.